Yeah. Okay. Meanwhile, woo, not a con. All right, I'm Paul Jark. This is Collaborative Authorship and Patch Deployment and Impractical Guide. Um, so a lot of what I'll talk about here will be phrased in terms of Wikipedia but it isn't necessarily specific to Wikipedia. That's just a good example, testbed, frame of reference sort of thing. So um, some of the inspiration for this came from uh, a blog I was reading, uh, Mono Singham, highly recommended. Read it, blog.case.edu slash mxs24. Um, he mentioned in one of his posts uh, a study that was done where someone found fewer errors per amount of text in Wikipedia than they found in Encyclopedia Britannica. And yet, in spite of this, Wikipedia would not be treated as such a reliable source as Encyclopedia Britannica, mainly for the reason that in the case of a professionally published work, you know that somebody has put their name on it, they've put their reputation on it, they've put their livelihood on it, and so you know that they would have something to lose by giving any false information or, you know, just doing low quality work. Um, so my thought was, is there a way we can add that to something like Wikipedia and still keep the advantages that we have with Wikipedia? Um, I, t I take it sort of for granted that Wikipedia did do something right. Allowing everyone to contribute is a pretty big advantage, I would, th I would think. Um, and that is, you know, the, the cause of their popularity. Um, okay, aviotropic turunculus. Um, looking for other problems we might be able to solve at the same time. Um, when you go to a Wikipedia page, you see the latest and greatest information they have, right? Half right. You see the latest information, but that isn't necessarily the greatest. There could have been a better version of that, uh, of that page earlier. Somebody made a change, either maliciously or otherwise, introduced some kind of error, and so now the new page is not so good. So it would be nice if we could get the best information as opposed to the latest information. Uh, the community is you know, self-correcting, sure, but only probabilistically. At any given time, some pages will have errors. So there's some luck involved. Um, Wikipedia strives to present a single cohesive version of reality and I, I think that's a little idealistic. Um, recognizing disputes would be useful. And it, it would also be useful to really um, quantify it in some respect, um, show how much support there is for any given side of an issue. Um, also, not all contributions, as mentioned earlier, are of equal quality. Some are better than others, and we would like to know which ones are the good ones, which ones should we take with a grain of salt, lick of salt, pillar of salt. The solution, or a solution, or an improvement, or an idea. By all means, if anything I say doesn't make sense, shoot me down. This is just an idea, not anything well thought out, polished. So a way to add a reputation, which will bring us, you know, the evidence of risk and some kind of accountability, I think, would be to have 
people be able to sign off on individual pieces of information. This statement, you know, so and so was born on this date. Yes, I checked that out. I looked up birth certificates. I can vouch for this. Any any other thing like that, you can you would. The basic idea is you would uh, specify, you know, on some scale. I've investigated to this degree, and I agree with his statement as a result of that to this degree. Um, so once you have that, then you can say, all right, I don't just know that, you know, this somebody thinks this is true. I can point to a variety of sources and say all of these people have investigated to whatever degree and will vouch for this. And by doing that, they've put their reputations at stake. And so that, I think, could give the same kind of accountability and reliability that we expect from a professional sort of reference work. OK, so of course, to have a reputation, you have to have an identity. And Wikipedia already has that. Um, but another way it could be done, I was thinking, was have a uh, public key cryptography system where to sign off on a piece of information, you, you know, make up the statement, there's this core statement, I investigated this amount, I agree with it this amount, and then I sign off on that with my public key. And then anybody can check that. So that public key would provide an identifier. Um, perhaps even that public key would be the entire essence of someone's identity. And that would, uh, rather than having it associated with a real world name, all you know is this key has signed off on this information. The idea there being, and this is just you know random thought, maybe worthwhile, maybe not, but the thought there is that you're not dragging along any trappings of authority from meat space that might uh, carry undue weight that isn't really deserved in uh, the information space. Um, also, if, if the, with a public key infrastructure, you don't necessarily have to rely on a centrally managed system, which can be you know, abused, controlled, much like Jason Scott was talking about. And of course, public key infrastructures are just so easy to deploy. <laughs> Not. All right, so once this sort of thing would exist, why would somebody use it? Isn't this even harder to do than you know, what we've got now with Wikipedia and the editorship of Wikipedia is certainly smaller than the readership already. Um, so one way to encourage adoption, I think, would not be to do away with the information that is not highly rated in terms of people have vouched for it, but just to mark it differently and say, all right, here's something that somebody said hasn't had a lot of investigation, so that would sort of act as an invitation for more people to do some investigation on it. Um, so that way, when somebody hits up a page, they see, here's all the information. Here's stuff that I can count on as being pretty reliable. Here's some extra information that maybe it's good, maybe it's not. I don't know. If I'm interested, if I really care, I'll look into it myself and then report back, and the community can trust it one iota more, since I've uh, checked off on it. Um, I think it would be useful in this sort of thing to have some sort of expiration, gradual expiration, of old sign-offs on facts or whatever um, for a variety of reasons. Youthful indiscretion, you know, sure, many years ago I signed off on things that I would not want to admit to anymore. So, of course, I would be very appreciative if the system did not bring up those things today. Um, or even if it's not my judgment changing 
new information may have become available since then, and so I would not hold to all the same statements that I might have in past times. All right. This sort of system, of course, could be abused like any other. Uh, one of the obvious ways is somebody goes in and signs off on statements they know are wrong hoping to mislead others by uh, you know, making a false statement more highly rated in this trust system. Um, but I think that would not be a very effective attack because, should have mentioned this earlier, along with signing off on facts, people can also sign off on each other's identities in, uh, with, with respect to various topics. So, Brian, I know, may be knowledgeable about politics. So anything he says about politics, if he's signed off on it, I'll trust him about that. If Cameron says anything about BSD, I'll trust him about that, could be. Um, and so if somebody deliberately signs off on bad information, if they do that consistently, they're not going to earn anybody's respect or trust and so they're not going to get themselves highly rated they're not going to get their information highly rated if they sign off on good stuff to get themselves highly rated highly rated and then switch to signing off on bad stuff to subvert it then they would quickly tumble in the rankings one would suppose um, in any rate at any rate the system would hopefully be, de be designed so that one person or a small number of people signing off on something bad would not be enough to make it seem good. Um, identity flooding, another possible problem. I want to boost up this apparent fact, so I'll create a whole bunch of cryptographic identities and all of them will sign off on this. Yes, I've investigated this 100%. I agree with it 100% leaving aside that 100% is already pretty suspicious on its own, um, we would like to avoid having the mere number of identities be a good indication of anything. Um, the trust relations, relationships, I think, should be weighted more significantly. You may have noticed that this is all very abstract. I would agree with you. <laughs> Hence, in the title, Impractical Guide. Uh, this is not very fleshed out at all. It's just an idea. It got me kind of excited, so I thought I'd share it. So once we have something like this, what's the benefit? Uh, somebody hits up a page, they see the information, they can tell what's been approved, what hasn't, what's had any degree of investigation, and so what they walk away with from there will be different than if they just saw one flat, unadorned page. So the effective accuracy of the page, I think, would be enhanced. Um, I don't remember what I was hinting at to myself with knowing is half the battle. Maybe it'll come to me later. <laughs> uh, citation, once you've got somebody putting their name on the line, their, or at least their public key, um, <laughs> saying, I vouch for this, you can rely on it, or you can blame me, then you've got something you can cite. You can, even though uh, Wikipedia tries not to be a primary source, it could perhaps still be an intermediate source. It's something you, input, you can point to with cryptographic signatures. It could be, here's where you can see where I got it, and you can track that back to other people and find out where they got it. And a lot of this, I think, would work in parallel pretty much the same way in the realm of distributed code development and distribution and deployment. Um, you, we've already got distributed revision control systems. Uh, GNU Arch, 
uh, darks, all sorts of things, um, where there is no one definitive repository, at least at the technical level. Um, they act more like peers. A change is added to this one. If other people like it, they'll add it to their repositories as well. And even though socially there may be one recognized as the official source repository, technically anybody could act independently and maintain their own. And if the general user community decides that, you know, Joe Maintainer isn't so reliable anymore, we like this guy better, it's really easy to switch. So I'm sure a lot of these things, to some degree, have already been considered, if not done, in the realm of uh, code distribution. Um, a change set appears, you can sign it with a cryptographic key, that's easy enough. Add it to your repository, other people's repositories can find out, oh, here's a new change set. It's been signed by this key. I trust that key. I'll pull it into my, my uh, repository. And maybe I'll even automatically deploy, deploy it uh, on my server farm. More likely my test server farm before I've had a chance to uh, look, at, look at it myself. But, uh, you know, in principle it's possible. So that's pretty much my idea. Now shoot me down and let's make it better. Have you seen the uh, Firefox extension called Outfoxed? Outfoxed? No, yeah. I haven't. Sure. And based on that, you can write a site good or bad or whatever. You can pick, yeah, I want to see um, all, I want to, it even shows up on Google results. It'll show higher rated ones by people you know or people that they know. Nice. It's, it's kind of the same thing you've talked about, at least for the user part of it. Do you know uh, where all that information gets stored? It's all on their server. Okay. It's, yeah. It's Right, yeah. yeah uh, even if the uh, identity management is distributed with a public key infrastructure, there, if the information hosting is centralized, there is still some possibility for abuse there. Um, maybe something like Freenet could be more effective at preventing any sort of abuse at that level. That it would be complicated to break it all down, um, but I think the the assertions, the approvals, the sign-offs would be more meaningful if they're applied to a small statement than they are to a bigger statement. But of course, you could still apply them to statements at any level. I mean, uh, technically, there's no reason to enforce size of a statement that you can sign off on. I would think. somebody signs off on something, it's actually true, but who's going to know? Eventually, well, if, if you've only got a, a small number of people signing off on it, then hopefully the reader would be intelligent enough not to trust it too much. And the system could help them along by saying, there's only this many people, generally speaking, that's not enough to consider it very reliable especially if it's in some sort of category where facts usually get checked out by lots and lots of people. And so um, if, if that fact has had less review than its neighbors, then it would not be as trusted. And then once more people do look into it and investigate it for themselves, then th there, there will be the conflict of, I've investigated this and I sign off that it's false. And as, as more and more people 
investigate it, it's less and less likely that all of them will be involved in a conspiracy to defraud the public because the more, more people you get, they're basically defrauding themselves, which could be a problem, I suppose, in terms of wishful thinking. Uh, Sure. Yeah, differing opinions. And in terms of uh, code distribution, there's also the problem of, all right, now how do you support 50,000 slightly different versions? So not saying it's a good idea. It's just an idea. Uh, for code especially, it would probably work better on a, a small scale within the core developer community rather than uh, the public at large. then, yeah, if, if you've got something that's already established with its own reputation behind it, somebody comes along and suggests a change, that change, I would say, should have its own independent reputation. Sure, yeah. And then the same people who have investigated the original, they see this change, they may investigate that as well and help it gain the uh, same reputation. Ticket, ticket, ticket. All right. I guess that's it then. Wow, I'm way under time, sorry. Yes. <laughs> if you're interested about that, I could uh, go on and on about how I set up my system. Tell them about Slash FS. <laughs> <laughs> slash FS. Slash FS is uh, the way I organize my file systems based around the idea that um, physical storage need not have anything to do with the name you access a, a file by. I am way into symlinks. And so I deliberately make my physical mount points obscure. And so there's no expectation that they should be pretty. And then I am free to make my symlinks as pretty as possible. And I even make my root file system tempfs. It's all in RAM. And so I can just, even if all my disks are mounted read only, I can still just swap my symlinks around to redefine the meaning of any path I need to. It's a good time. Yeah. All right. 